So we've opened up Sharp Develop, which is similar to Microsoft's Visual Studio. And we're going to create a test application. And we're going to make that test application a solution and a project. And we'll start out with a Windows application and call it Magical Interfaces Test. And the name of our project is going to be the same as our solution in this case. So now that we have our solution and our project, both of which are called magical interfaces, we're going to work on placing controls on our form. Now, a form is basically like an empty canvas that will allow us to place other objects upon it. Um, and we could actually have an entire program within this form, like a video game. But we're going to keep this very simple and basically just going to make a dialog box that allows us to click on two different buttons in order to make a choice, which will be yes or no. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into view and select tools and we're going to select Windows Forms under Tools. And we're going to drag two buttons onto this form. So we have one button. And we're going to change the text of that button to say no with a negative sign. And we're going to change the name of that button to BTN No. Now, this is the properties window that we're working with. And a property is basically something that describes an object. So A property can describe something like the size of the object. For instance, we can change the size of this button to 100 by 50. And we can change our appearance by changing the background color, for example. To a different color and in this case we'll select light blue or aqua and we're going to drag another button onto the form and we're going to set the text of that button to yes with a plus or positive sign and we're going to change the name of that button to button BTN yes. And we'll change the size to correspond to the other button. And then we're going to line these up on the form. Next, we're going to change the background color of this button to salmon. Okay, and then we're going to save our solution and project. Next, we're going to double click on the no button in order to bring up our code window and generate code 
that's going to respond to the event of this button. And an event is something that happens when a user interacts with that particular object. A button has a click event that corresponds to an event that will happen when a user clicks on the button. Um, in this case, we can have Sharp Develop generate code for us in order to respond to this event by double clicking on the button. So we're going to double click on the No button. And as we see here, Sharp Develop, which is similar to Visual Studio, has generated a button no click event. And this will run when the user clicks on the button. Now we're going to respond to that by displaying some sort of feedback. Um, in order to do that, we're going to go back to the design window and we're going to select a text box. And this text box, I'm going to resize it, it's going, going to give us feedback when the user clicks on one or the other button. So we're going to change the name of this text box to txt output for this example. We're going to go back to our code. First, we're going to save this. And then we're going to go back to our code corresponding to our no click event. Double click on the button, and that generates our button click event. Now, in the button click event, we're going to access txt output, which is our text box, and we're going to set the text box text property to reflect the fact that we clicked the no button. We're going to say user has clicked the blue no button. And then we're going to save that. I'm going to go back to our form designer and then we're going to double click on the yes button in order to generate code to respond to the button yes click event. So once again, that function is generated by Sharp Develop, much like Microsoft's Visual Studio. And in this case, we're just going to simply copy the text that we used in the button no click event and paste it into the button yes click event function and simply modify what we're setting the text property of the text box, box output to. And we're going to say the user has clicked the Salmon yes button. And we're going to save that. Next, we're going to build our project, we'll build our solution and project, and it indicates it's building here, and the build finished successfully without any errors. And we'll go back to our design window, although we don't have to, and then we're going to click on our play button in order to execute or run the application and then test it from the user's perspective where we'll be able to click on the button and test the functionality of this application. 
So we click on the play button to run the application. Once we've run the application, the dialog box appears and as a user we can interact with this application and test it out. So we're going to click on the no button and it will fire off that event and run that code and it will change what is displayed in the text box depending on which button we click on. So we're going to click the no button and notice the text box has changed to indicate that the user has clicked the blue no button. Now when I click the yes button, the message changes again. The user has clicked the Salmon yes button. If I go back and click the no button, it will change again, so on and so forth, okay? So that's the first step to our application. Um, next, we're going to create other controls and show how we can do other things. But for now, this has been the first presentation in what I expect to be a long series um, as we explore how programming and magic relate. Thank you.